Hello, I'm James Hortop from Merlin Equipment. We're the UK distributors for the Fall River range of batteries. Fall River manufacture a very, very high quality battery. All of the batteries within the range are of a pure lead design. That means that we use virtually pure lead within the batteries. It makes them outperform a standard AGM battery by a very, very large factor indeed. You'll see two ranges here. We've got the full throttle batteries. These are a thin plate design. So thin plate equals greater surface area, which means that we can generate instantaneously very high levels of current. And then we've got a thick plate design, which is a DC series, which are designed for excessive deep cycling. Within a full throttle range of batteries, we're able to generate much more current than a conventional battery. And just something such as our, our small FT410 battery would be enough to start a six cylinder diesel engine. They're great for use with bow thrusters on boats, or for winches on 4x4 vehicles, or for operating a passenger winch or lift on the back of an ambulance. They're available in a very wide range of sizes. This one, for example, is a direct drop-in replacement for an Optima type battery. The DC series range is available from 55 amp hours to 260 amp hours at 12 volts. We also have a 2 volt and a 6 volt range right the way up to 400 amp hours. The DC series range of batteries will give you approximately 1300 cycles if you deep cycle them down to 50% depth of discharge on every cycle. However, the DC series is also unique in the fact that we can actually cycle these down to 0% state of charge, which means that you can pull the full amp hours out of the battery. Now, if you do that, you're only going to be getting about 750 cycles out of that battery. However, it's still superior to anything else on the market. So what makes the Fall River battery different to a standard AGM battery? And today we're going to have a look at that. This is the makeup of a standard lead acid battery. All of the things that have been called out here are things that can either be improved or value engineered, depending on whether you're going for a cheap or a high performance battery. The main things that we're going to be looking at within the video are the grids and the partitions, and in particular, the bus bars, which run between each cell. A battery is made up of battery plates. Each plate is made up of a grid. Within that grid is pasted something called active material. Positive and negative grids are stacked together with separators between them to form a cell. Each cell is rated at two volts and in a 12 volt battery, you always have six two volt cells. Those two volt cells are connected in series together using intercell bus bars. And we'll be looking at those later on in the video when we start tearing a battery apart. Each two volt cell is made up of an individual plate. Those plates are made up of a grid framework that's either cast or it's stamped out a piece of lead. To that is then pasted uh, the active material for the battery. And once it's dried or it's cured, it looks a little bit like plaster. Within a full river battery, the pasted plate is cured for a total of 10 days before it's been put inside a battery, which is quite unique. The quality of the grid really does affect the overall quality of the battery. Most low cost batteries are made out of what we call expanded grids. And essentially an expanded grid is made up of a plate of, of lead and it's stamped and then they pull it apart, as you can see in the picture on the right, to create a grid to which they paste the active material. That's obviously not very strong. The full river batteries have a fully cast grid. So instead of it being stamped out of a piece of metal, um, hot lead is poured into a mold to create this grid structure. A, it's much thicker, B, it is much stronger, and C, you tend not to get lots of sharp edges on the sides of the grid. Those sharp edges can cause short circuits inside the battery. Looking at the top of a full river battery, we can see that the intercell connecting bus bars form part of the integral structure of the battery. So where these are connected together, you can see that the bus bar actually interlocks into the partition wall, but also the top part of that bus bar is then epoxied into the lid of the battery to form one solid complete structure. That really helps with the battery being resistant to shock and vibration. All full river batteries have the following features, and that doesn't matter whether or not they're within the full throttle or the DC series. They use 99.98% pure lead. That gives the battery a very low internal resistance, which means it will charge much faster than a conventional battery, but also it gives the battery the ability to deliver very high current instantaneously. So it makes them very good for starting engines and also running inverters or bow thrusters or winches. 
Now with most batteries, the grids are pasted and inserted pretty much straight away inside the battery. With a full river battery, they are cured for 10 days within an oven. Uh, that helps the active material to adhere really closely to the uh, plate itself um, and stops it shedding. Within the battery, all lead materials are exactly the same so that you don't get any galvanic corrosion inside the battery. Oversized, integrated and over the partition bus bars. The cases themselves are epoxy sealed with high PSI, high pressure valves. It means that the battery can operate at a higher temperature without losing electrolyte, which is the thing that starts to kill AGM batteries. Really good, high quality terminals and connection hardware. We give you a full five year warranty with the battery as well. Some of the other benefits that you get with Full River batteries is because of the low internal resistance that the batteries can sit on the shelf for a very long period of time without self-discharging. They can be mounted in any orientation, so on their sides. However, we don't recommend them being mounted upside down. They're designed for high vibration environments, but also they're safe for use in human occupied compartments. So they're quite safe to be put underneath a berth on a boat or on a motorhome, for example. They also IR to approve for air shipping. The full throttle batteries are our thin plate design battery and we use them for either semi-traction use or cranking. And it'll be subject to another video, but we're gonna be demonstrating just how big an engine one of those very small batteries can start. The batteries are interchangeable with Optima, Red Flash and Odyssey brands, and the range runs from eight amps all the way up to 225 amp hours uh, with over 30 different models. The Full River DC series battery is designed for heavy duty deep cycle applications, and we can give you up to 1500 cycles from a 50% depth of discharge. And uniquely, they can be discharged to 100% depth of discharge without damage. And we provide a five year warranty uh, for marine and vehicle use with a Full River DC series battery. So now we're going to have a look at cutting one open. So you've seen the theory behind the difference in the batteries, so now what we're actually going to do is have a look at what's really inside them uh, by doing something which we would recommend that you don't do at home and that is a tear down of the batteries. Okay so we've removed the tops off both batteries, we'll start having a look at some of the differences. Uh, firstly on the outside what you'll notice is this is a polypropylene case, this is an ABS case the difference between that one is much much stronger than the other this prevents cells moving about now cells moving about is a bad thing because it promotes active material shedding from the plates the lid of this battery is heat sealed you can see that the lid of the full river battery is epoxy sealed and then when we actually look inside the lids we can see some quite significant differences firstly this lid as we said was epoxied in you can see the epoxy within the battery itself that means that it's hermetically sealed, which also means that we can set the valves much higher PSI rating to a standard battery. The batteries get hot when they discharge and charge, and that rise in temperature creates a rise in pressure. So the higher the settings of the valves, the better. Um, unfortunately, I've managed to cut straight through the middle of them as I, as I took the lid off this battery, but one of the things that we noticed straight away with the Full River battery is that these bus bars, the interconnecting bus bars, go over these cell partitions and you can see that they go in, they actually interlock with the tops of each partition and then into this area here where they're sealed with epoxy again. So it makes it a very, very strong structure and it stops those cells moving about. On the other battery, on the other hand, you see there's no such thing as that. Basically, these just are clipped onto the top and you can see the cells moving around straight away, but also the flexibility of the case. And it's that flexing that causes problems for batteries to shed their active material. So I'm going to take a look at actually what the plates within the batteries look like. Now I'm going to start with our standard battery if I can get one out. Just try pulling on the edge there and flipping acid all over the place. Oh, there we go. So this is the grid of the standard battery and we were talking about expanded grids and cast grids and you can see straight away within this battery what's occurred. So this is a expanded grid so that's been created from a single sheet of lead, it's been stamped and then it's pulled apart physically to create this grid. And you can see it's very weak, it's very flexible. But also that's just come straight out of the battery and you can see this is, a, this is precisely what we're talking about, about the shedding of active material. And you can see it's done exactly that, there's holes in it and that paste has just come off and it's just started to, 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 to shed inside the battery. Um, the full river battery on the other hand, you'll see if we can get one of these out, it's slightly more difficult. This is the full of a whole cell pack coming out in this 
instance, but I don't know if we can see this. It's probably a little unfair, this is not an older battery than this one. This is at end of life, it's not a brand new one off the shelf. Um, but basically you can see the difference in the cell there. If I can pull that off, see how much thicker that plate is. So it's a very thick plate. It's cast, so it's hot cast. Now by hot casting it, we don't get any of the sharp edges that are caused by stamping it out. So that doesn't tend to wear through the cell wall very easily. But also, once this is pasted with the four of a paste, this is then put in an oven for uh, 10 days to cure properly. And you can see them in this battery, which is end of life. And I'm manually moving that. It's really quite difficult to start getting it to break apart. You can see within this battery, this is a really good example of shedding of active material. You can see that the active material is actually left there as I've pulled it apart. And you can see the difference. As I say, with the grids, this is actually quite a good grid here. So you can see how flexible that is comparison to the Full River one, which is highly inflexible in comparison. Probably you know, it's all glass and metal off that, we'll see it. You can see it's not flexible in the same way. There really is your difference, and you can see the amount of lead in that plate versus that plate, and that's where your cost difference and your performance difference, of course, comes from. The other thing which you will notice here is that within the Full River battery, the cells are highly compressed. It's really quite difficult to get those out. Again, being held in place amongst a very thick battery case to stop them moving about. And you'll see on the standard battery, they're much, much more flexible and they're going to move about. Again, quite a significant difference when it comes to preventing the shedding of active material. So many people ask me, what is the difference between a standard 50 quid battery and one of our 150 quid top of the range Full River AGM batteries? Well, hopefully today you've seen what that difference is. Now, if you'd like some more information, please take a look at www.merlinequipment.com or give us a call on 01202 697979. I'll be very happy to take a call, one of my colleagues will. Or if you're in the Exeter area, please pop in, come and have a look at our showroom. We'd love to show you around. Thank you.